Hello, we are back with Chanel. <laughs> What's up? What's up? <laughs> it's, it's been what, three months since the last time I saw you? Yes, because yeah. I released an album then and then now I it's released like, another one. Guess what? <laughs> I know, but I did warn you guys. I said I have a surprise <laughs> coming. Yes. Yeah, and, and it's this album, which we will get to in a bit. Yes. Yes. So, um, the past three months, mm -hmm. yeah, how have you been? I've been great, you know, just um, focusing on promoting mm -hmm. and um, because I knew this album was coming, I was working on the Destiny album mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so now we're here. Yes, like album this yes, year. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's talk about the album first. Mm -hmm. uh, so this was your international album mm -hmm. and it was your first international album in seven years. Yes, yes, yes. it's been a long time. Um, I wasn't sure this was ever going to happen because mm -hmm. when I was doing J-pop music, that kind of was what, what my career was. Mm -hmm. And um, when my deal was done, I found myself in a place where I felt like I hit a plateau. Mm -hmm. And my question to myself was, okay, do I continue with J-pop or do I take my ass home <laughs> and figure out if I want to just take a risk and experiment and find new music? So I chose that. So you I chose went the back. latter option. I did. Let's go back. I did. Yeah. I went home and not knowing exactly what I was going mm -hmm. to do, um, and met up with a producer of mine that uh, was open to working with me and finding the sound, which mm -hmm. we did. And boom, Universal yes. ended, ended up calling me like a what year. Are you or doing? Yeah, <laughs> a year or so afterwards. You know, like, do you have any music? Actually. I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And when you weren't sure if they will like it or not, but they ended up. Being... I was sure they were not gonna like it. Right. You know. Yeah. And um, so when they came back and said that they wanted to help license the album, I was like, really? Mm -hmm. I was like, wow. You know, mm -hmm. it's kind of one of those examples that you've heard. I'm sure you've heard many different artists. It's like we all have kind of that similar story where we have to go through the. Let's do whatever you want. And then they hit this spot and then they go, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. What do I want to do? And, yeah. And I was I felt well, like. Luckily I was, for you, the contract was about to end. Yeah, <laughs> you know? It's like, I was a good like, girl. Look at Kesha. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Exactly. So, but I mean, your um, previous international album was seven years ago. Yeah. Right? What was the difference with this one? What do you think? Um, the biggest difference, well, the biggest difference was definitely me knowing exactly who I was and the kind of music that I wanted to do mm -hmm. because when I came out with Things Happen For Reason and Feel Good, um, Things Happen For Reason was probably more authentic than Feel Good was. I felt like Feel Good was kind of like, okay, we need to put out an album, Chanel, like put something together. Mm -hmm. So it was very rushed and because I knew that I loved reggae and pop, you know, I just kind of was like, let's just, you know, let's do another album like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but because it was very rushed, I didn't really get to spend time and thinking and doing like, you know, figuring out what right. I really wanted to do. So that was kind of just thrown out there. Yeah. Also in the liner notes for this album, you mentioned that you weren't sure about releasing like Western market ready music mm -hmm. in Japan because right. there's like a lag time where mm -hmm. the people, the audience, you kind of catch up. So. Was that one thing that was kind of difficult when putting this album out, like, thinking about, like, what if... They didn't get it? Risk? Yeah. Well, yeah, and I think that the theme of this year for me is risk-taking, you know? And yeah. so, um, I thought, well, I could think like that and never release the music, or I could potentially be that artist to create that kind of new risk-taking trend. Right. Why not, you mm -hmm. know? Um, it's something that I'm passionate about, and if my fans are truly um, loyal, which I know that they are, mm -hmm. I'm sure they'll be able to really indulge in, right. in this, you know? Yeah. So. That's true. I mean, there's a lot of fans that get angry, like, oh, they chose a different direction, or the sound changed. And yeah, but then so, what happened, you know? Yeah. They ended up, they ended up following, mm -hmm. you know, they did that with Britney Spears, with... Christina Aguilera, yeah, like, yeah, you know, like, Mariah Carey, right. like, oh my gosh, she came out with Honey, what's going on? Mm -hmm. and next thing you know, 15, 20 years later, people were still loving it, you right. know what I mean? So, yeah. you gotta create that path. Mm -hmm. I mean, classics will always be classics, and, you know, I think we should celebrate artists for, you know, doing what they feel passionate about, and yeah. venturing down, you know, 
discovering a different side to them. Yes, absolutely. Or yeah. not being afraid to show all sides of them. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Out of the box people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk about some of the songs? Sure. Um, any tracks that I know we already heard um, Let You Like Me, mm -hmm. which was in the previous album, which is yeah. the English version. Exactly. Which you did a skate with um, on Instagram, I saw the skate. Did you like that? <laughs> Is that funny? How did that come about? Um, well, you know, my day-to-day -day, uh, had some relationships mm -hmm. with influencers and we thought, you know, why don't we do something to kind of promote the right. uh, single? And uh, I met up with John, he's so funny. Mm -hmm. And, John Jones. Yeah, and he um, he ended up, you know, coming up with this skit idea, and I said, I love it. Let's do yeah, it. I mean, it was, it was a genius marketing. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. It was right. so much fun. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yep. Yep. Um, how about some of the the, the themes? Um, I read the lyrics and everything. So. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite on your man? What do you can't <gasps> stop listening to? Home. I, I mean, that really grew on me, and uh -huh. um, I I like home because they like really um. Like it, it's about like discover, like being confident in like, the mm -hmm. direction you're gonna be going in, right? Yes, right. and you know what, man? I just wanna like cry right now because um, I had a few interviews mm -hmm. and people ha have really been pinpointing on the song Home um, because when I put the order of it, it mm -hmm. was so important. Right. And I'm like, okay, what do I want as the very first song? And I was like, it has to be Home because it kind of drives the entire album mm -hmm. because it speaks of the entire album like hey guys guess what i put a whole bunch of music together but just so you know i have never felt more at home mm -hmm. than now and before you guys get to listen to the rest of the album here's an introduction of how it feels to be exactly mm -hmm. where i want to be no, you know it it stuck out the most because i mean reading about what you were going through mm -hmm. um and then speaking to you last time and i think that the song home really kind of captures everything that you were like, trying to explain last mm -hmm. time, you know? I love you. Yeah, oh, thank you. Thank you so yeah. much for saying that. Yeah. That means so, you really, that means so much mm -hmm. to me. It resonated with me the most. Um, also, like, sonically, it's amazing. Right? right. Oh, man, wait till you hear it live. Yeah. Wait till you hear it live. Mm -hmm. My band is incredible. Oh, you're going to be playing with the band this time? Yes. Ooh. Yeah. Yes. Because it's like... You refer to a snake shedding its own skin, mm -hmm. right? But like, when I heard it, lyrically, of course, but sonically, mm -hmm. I imagine like butterflies coming out of their cocoons, you know? Wow. You know what I mean? And it's like, it, it really captures like the message in the music. Mm -hmm. right? And that speaks metamorphosis. Exactly. So that's Which incredible. is the whole concept of the song and the album. I just, Love right? it. Um, Love it. Anything else that you would like to talk about? I, you know, each and every one of these songs on here mm -hmm. is special to me. Um, Really, because they're all so much of substance. Um, you know, we could talk about liquor story, you mm -hmm. know, and that's like, you know, the tables have turned. You know, we often talk about, well, you know, it's not about me talking about this person hurting me. The story is about how I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. and Trying I, to like mask that mistake with drinking. Yeah, you know, I made a mistake. How the hell did I leave this person, mm -hmm. you know, and that's my liquor story, you right. know, so I'm drowning myself in. My favorite liquor. But anyway, <laughs> no, um, it's, uh, it was really clever. It, was, it said, uh, "Cheers to the dumbest girl in the world." In the world. <laughs> I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you picked that up. Yeah, yeah you yeah. know, it's it's yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, lie to me. I think is really different because when I was sitting with my boy, because um, I have a writing partner named CJ. Mm -hmm. This is the producer that you said that you. Really no, that's Mario. Okay. But lie to me is actually a, a uh, stereotypes. You know who the stereotypes are. I thought um, they did. Um, they did lie to me. They did afterlife, and they did hand it over. Right. Okay. okay. They yeah. did. They did burn them ours, and they did. Right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. They're incredible. Mm -hmm. So with me and CJ, CJ's my writing partner. Mm -hmm. So we were, uh, you know, because what happened was the stereotypes was up there jamming, you know, and we were in our own world over here. Um, Dude, this is happening in the same. Yeah. Area. Yeah. Okay. You know. So I told them I was like, okay, guys, you know, I kind of want another song that's in the world of like "Love You Like Me" that's still pop but has kind of like, kind of like a Caribbean feel to mm -hmm. it, but still pop. Right. And so they started playing it. You know, start playing around with sounds, and me and CJ was we started to write, and I came up with this idea. I was like, how do I make this song catchy but still kind of different? Mm -hmm. And I was like, la 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 to me. I was like, people would sing along with that. Mm -hmm. Now, why am I saying lie to me? And I said, 
Well, sometimes, sometimes. Can't speak for everybody. Sometimes you just want to be lied to. Like, don't, just, it's okay. Just, just tell me that I'm hot even though I don't feel hot right now. Mm -hmm. Even though I may not be hot to you right now. Even though I may not be the most special person to you right now. Even though I may not be dancing the best right now. Just lie to me. Just want please. to live in that fantasy. Yeah, just, for just a give me that fantasy. Yeah. yeah, just for a second. Please, just mm -hmm. lie to me. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I think just, I've been lied to too many times. <laughs> it's not like this on yeah, don't take it too far, man. Yeah. Don't take it too far. I didn't I say all that. Lies, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, in songs like, you know, Kiss and Fun, I feel like it's just so different mm -hmm. and so kind of like. A lot of my songs are very raw sounding, I feel right. like. You know, um, the way the instrumentation is um, and the way I'm singing on it too. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of play mm -hmm. on words with F U N. Mm -hmm. And um, remember my name. Remember my name. Having Miyabi play guitar on it was. Ugh. Uh, were we in the same studio at the same time? Well, when he put that guitar down for this version, I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. But we did come together again where we tried a couple of other versions, but we ended up going with the first version mm -hmm. we did. And I was just so inspired by him and his difference in how he plays guitar. Right. And it's almost like he. I don't know. It's like like, it's like a, that net. <laughs> yeah, some like he's just such an artist, you know. And I really was so grateful uh -huh. that he got on the song. It really brought the song to life. Right, and it's it's also a great closing track for the album. Like, oh my know. god, if I could pay everybody who's told me that, I just love it. No, I but, feel like my purpose. No, I was is, to, like, okay, this is a good way to end the, the album. Thank you. Know? You. you know, thank like, you. Overall, because I I really like the sound. Because overall, it, it's a positive album, mm -hmm. but it kind of has like that. Not sadness. I don't know what the word is. It's like it's like positive yeah. darkness. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> it's like going through the hardships and like in the end you kind of find you like you know. I like that because direction. you know what it is. I want people to embrace the negativity in life. Right. I know we always talk about positivity, but embrace your negativity too mm -hmm. because the negative is really what helps bring you like helps if you allow it, mm -hmm. brings out the best in you because you have to go through pain in order for change right. to happen, you know. And also kind of be aware of what you need to work on and exactly. where you want to go, you know. That's a choice, you know, it's like you could either stay depressed mm -hmm. or just understand the fact that you're going through the shit for a reason. So what are you going to do? You're going to learn the lessons or you're going to be a victim? Which one you want? Mm -hmm. You know, so. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. A little Oprah moment. <laughs> Oprah's my mentor. No. Oh, yeah. You're, um, I was watching her Instagram story and then you were going on this long ass train ride, I think, to see your dad or something. On this train. And then you, for a split second, you showed us this book you were reading. Uh huh. And it was like, I forgot the title, but. <laughs> you know that book I'm talking about? It's a blue book with like a yellow letter. Yes, it's it. called um, Insight. Insight. What was that about? Is this what we're talking about? That's cool. um, read that. It's about awareness and how it's a different mm -hmm. perspective in awareness, okay. you know, because we read, well, I've read a lot of kind of like, be positive and, you know, it's all positive about... Positive trend. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and it's, it's, it's good, mm -hmm. but some people can get lost in the high of it. It's like, let's just stay positive, you know, because it feels good. Mm -hmm. However, there's so much more depth to what that means, mm -hmm. you know, why do we need that, but why do we also need negativity um, and the whole balance of it, right. the importance of it. And in the book Insight, you know, speaks on awareness, like what is, what is awareness really, mm -hmm. you know, and it talks about introspection and just, just a very different perspective. It brings a lot of like reality, more realistic ways of, of being aware of things, you know, mm -hmm. like there's one what I learned in that book was, yeah, you could break things down. You know, you can be like, oh yeah, you know, because of my childhood, you know, this is why I'm experiencing this today and blah, blah, blah. But it could also be very dangerous. Mm -hmm. It can. If you allow for that to become kind of like the blame of, you know, you know what I'm when saying? you try to pinpoint the, the root of their issues and yeah. the cause of it, then you end up like being fixated on that. Exactly, exactly. My parents exactly. maybe this way. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, you know, I was like, yeah, you know, I go through because of this, this, this. Right. But yeah. You can't change it, so you might as well just like find a way to kind of alleviate the situation. Yeah, or just like, well, and this is what I'm doing right now, and that's really it. You mm -hmm. know, it's like, it's like too much like finding reason, you know? Right. It's like, nah, man, just go ahead, just go ahead. It just makes you tired if you try to exactly. stick to it, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So it was a good book, man. 
I'll check it out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I actually, no, I started watching Scandal because you told me. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. It's handled. <laughs> <laughs> what no. season are you on? No, it's like episode three. Yeah, yeah. Is it good? You like it? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of long episodes it's gonna though. It's going to get you yeah. stuck. It's going to get you stuck, I'm telling There's you. There's so much to watch right now, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the new album is out. Yep. Metamorphosis. Get it. Get it. <laughs> All right. You have a tour coming up, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> November. November, I think it starts November 12th or 13th, yeah. 13th in, um, it's Nagoya, Osaka, and... Kawasaki. Kawasaki, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I'm really excited because I'm going to be bringing the band. Okay, good, I'm You know, sorry. I'm going to be, uh, you know, I've released two albums this year, so there's going to be lots of music. In a short span, so there'll be a lot of new music. Okay, yeah. but of course, I'm going to be singing y'all's favorites. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> So come watch it because it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be different because I've also sung a lot of of my songs in Japanese and in English. So me and my creative director right now is kind of putting that together, like how okay. do we make this work, right. you know? It's gonna be different, uh -huh. excited. Interesting. Aside from singing, your singing career, you've been mm -hmm. involved in many, many things. Mm -hmm. like. um, <laughs> the Krabby Shack, for example. <laughs> uh, and also, um, a few weeks ago, I'm not sure, you attended a um, screening or an event. You watched that? No, I didn't watch it. I just saw it on your Twitter yeah. that you uh, it was a like a conference almost mm -hmm. for um, anti human trafficking. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, About bringing awareness to the issue. Yes, sir. Yeah. And it was kind of embarrassing on my end because I was born in Malaysia, mm -hmm. and what was such a kind of like a slap in the face for me was that I've always known about it, and there was. All the different speakers on there. I don't. I don't remember who specifically, but they said, you know, human trafficking has become like a statistic. It's almost like it's desensitized. Mm -hmm. And when I watched that, and there was a lot of victims on there too, mm -hmm. and I thought, wow, Chanel, mm -hmm. you really are a part of kind of like that automatic thinking of like, oh yeah, it's just another statistic. I'm not saying I didn't care, mm -hmm. but because that's just, you know, what was how people saw it in my in my surroundings. Mm -hmm. And to watch the different victims, you know, talk about their experiences, it was just, oh my God, it was just mm -hmm. so heartbreaking. And, um, you know, it just, it just drove me and my husband to, you know, want to also spread the word and let people know that, hey, this is happening right under our noses. Mm -hmm. Like, seriously. In, in all locations. All, yeah. everywhere in the world. And people talk about it being in Thailand and places like mm -hmm. that, but it happens in America. Right. It and probably happens in Japan. Honestly, mm -hmm. I'm sure it happens yeah. in Japan. So people just don't talk about it because sex is like this taboo thing. Right. So then it becomes even more desensitized and quiet. And and then those victims, their stories, and their it gets lost, and you know it's it's really sad. And it's so sad. Yeah. It's so sad, and something needs to be done about it. Right. Really, it's nuts. Right. And I'm like, what was also another part about it was who the hell is buying into this? Mm -hmm. Who's buying that one year old child? Right. Oh my god! Like I was in absolute tears when they were telling me that in the Philippines the youngest traffic child is a year old. It's crazy. It's screwed up. Mm -hmm. And I think some of the people don't even know they're being trafficked too. That's another part to it too. Like children who were kind of raised into it, mm -hmm. they don't know no better. Right. You know, and I'm sure that when they are being molested and you know, raped, I'm sure, I mean, we're human nature. Something must feel like it's killing you, even mm -hmm. though you may not know why. And that's where the messed up part is, you know? Mm -hmm. It's, oh God, it's just, it's terrible. Right. And especially now with like, I read when it's a natural disaster, like in the Caribbean or the American South, that's like, it becomes a hotbed for trafficking. Oh my God, are you serious? Yeah, so, that's like, a, like you said, it's maybe we, we usually think, oh, like Southeast Asia, but it's also other areas that are affected exactly. by this. And it, it can be, of course, in Japan too. So yeah. it's really nice that you're bringing awareness or you're using your platform to bring some you know, awareness to a big issue that we don't, that no one in Japan talks about. You know? <laughs> I mean, Japan is already such a taboo country, right? right? There's a lot of things, a conservative country, sorry, mm -hmm. where they, there's a lot of things that they're scared to talk about, mm -hmm. you know? So um, there's, you know, people are not going to know unless somebody says something right, about it. Right. So, yeah. How, how do you feel about that, you know, as a artist 
who has performed in Japan many, many times, mm -hmm. but is based in, in LA, you know, mm -hmm. do you feel this, I don't know, like, this itch when you're, when you're doing interviews with you? I can't say this, I can't say that. Do you feel this pressure? Um, like, that's I... That's a taboo, that's a taboo. Right yeah, now. I, well, just to let you know a little behind the scenes, I'm very like, I don't give a shit, I would like to say what I would like to say, thanks. That's you know, good, yeah. Um, you know, there are certain things that maybe is not necessary for me to say, you know, mm -hmm. they'll be like, well, Chanel, you know, what's the purpose of saying that? And that's something I have to ask myself. Right. It's like, all right, this is really purposeful, you know, or am I just trying to be an asshole, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, but so, I mean, as yeah. a viewer, you know, it feels really great and like liberating to see someone who's like out there and like, their own person and not like, yeah. I gotta be like modest and, you know, I can't talk about these things and it's, it's really nice. To yeah, see that, you well, know? you know what's funny, when I was coming out with all the J-pop stuff, you mm -hmm. know, because um, remember, everything that I'm saying has to be translated, mm -hmm. and the one, the reason for why I didn't get a lot of like backlash and all that kind of stuff is one, you know, I was in white dresses first of all, mm -hmm. so I already kind of gave that impression. Second, they probably didn't translate half the things I was, I was saying. Cut. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't know what's going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? So now I'm in a place where I understand Japanese a little bit more, mm -hmm. and I just fight a little bit more for what I can. Like, mm -hmm. no, did you translate that? Did you? Did you, um, <laughs> you did? You make okay. sure, yeah. When I can, uh -huh. you know what I mean? So. Yeah. But it's really nice to just see someone who's like, you know, using a platform to for a positive cause, you know? Mm -hmm. Thank yes. you. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. um, lastly, mm -hmm. we actually feel really bad. You made a playlist for us, like, last minute. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm so sorry. Like, I was just. I just, Actually, oh my god, um, it's fine. So, you made a playlist for us. Yes. Uh, and these are tracks that you mm -hmm. listen to when you work out. Mm -hmm. And we, if you follow Chanel on her social media, you know that you're always in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't have to feel guilty for eating something. <laughs> listen, I feel guilty for eating all the time. That's why I'm always in the gym. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's like you post like, a, a, a video of a fish being grilled. It's like, tomorrow I'm going to be in the gym for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> I should really do that, yeah. right? More often, like, okay, this equates to uh, a three mile run. Yeah. That's how I can eat from now on. Like, <laughs> to all equations. So. Exactly. All right. Can you tell us some about, about some of these tracks you chose? And, like, sure. Some, some classics and some new tracks I see. Yeah, um, well, you know, it depends like what kind of workouts I'm mm -hmm. doing as well. Usually like if I'm running, I like to listen to songs that are, you know, more so upbeat. So mm -hmm. like the Dua Lipa songs right. and, you know, like the, like Freedom is like the perfect song. Like, Freedom! I'm just yes. like, yeah, girl, you better go! The cardio <laughs> song. Yeah. Remember <laughs> like weightlifting. <laughs> weightlifting, you know, weightlifting I could pretty much listen to anything, even the slower ones for some reason, mm -hmm. because I really take my time with those. Right. Um, so I could listen to anything from like like Redbone to Unforgettable. Um, you know, Humble is a good one for mm -hmm. weightlifting. You know, kind of like the heavy hip hop songs are really fun to like, you know, because I, I don't know, it's hip hop, heavy weight, I don't know. It just goes, yeah. <laughs> um, so it's really between like, you know, weightlifting and, and um, cardio, but when I'm stretching. Yeah, what's like best cool down song? Stretching. Um, I'd probably say something like unforgettable again. Okay. You know? <laughs> it's like, on repeat the whole yeah. workout. <laughs> um, yeah. But we'll have this on um, our, our service as a playlist. So if anyone needs a good playlist to work out to, mm -hmm. you got her recommendation. There you go. Check it out. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank um, you. So once again, your new album came out. It's called Metamorphosis. Yes. <laughs> and then the tour is happening next month. Yes. Right. Hope to see you guys out. there. Check awesome. it out. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, babe. Yes. Appreciate it. All right. <laughs>